The idea that we are now uh, a few days away from a new administration, given, as you heard from the introduction, that I have been around for a while and have had the opportunity and, and the privilege and the pleasure of serving in five administrations, um, I thought I would bring that perspective to the topic today, is the issue of pandemic uh, preparedness. And if there's one message that I want to leave with you today based on my experience, and you'll see that in a moment, is that there is no question that there will be a challenge to the coming administration in the arena of infectious diseases, both chronic infectious diseases in the sense of already ongoing disease, and we have certainly a large burden of that, but also there will be a surprise outbreak. And I hope by the end of my relatively short presentation, you will understand why history now, the history of the last 32 years that I've been the director of NIAID will tell the next administration that there's no doubt in anyone's mind that they will be faced with the challenges that their predecessors were faced with. And the mistake that so many people have made is something that several of our panelists have already referred to, and that is a failure to look beyond our own borders in the issue of the globality of health issues, not only things that are there that will come here, but surprises that we have. Now we're talking about what an administration might face in regard to emerging diseases. And I'm gonna just put them together into newly and re-emerging diseases, and I'll get in a second to what I mean. So from my own personal experiences, why I can say with some confidence that history tells us that we will definitely get surprised in the next few years. So I had the opportunity of dealing very closely with President George W. Bush and his staff in dealing with how we're going to address bioterrorism. And I had a very interesting experience, which I'll always treasure. So I had the privilege of being on Air Force One, and the president called me up to his compartment and said, Tony, what scares you most? about potential microbial attacks. And he was talking about a terrorist. And I told him, I said, Mr. President, I worry more about the natural occurrence of an influenza pandemic and the ongoing plague of HIV than I do about a bioterror attack. What about the lessons learned? I've already said it about HIV, they're about the same. Global surveillance, transparency and communication, infrastructure capacity building, coordination and collaboration, the platform technology that I mentioned, and I am very much in favor of what everyone has said here today. Namely, we do need a public health emergency fund. The administration that is going to come in in the next few days. Will there be a resurgence of Zika? We're getting into the summer of the South America. Are we gonna see a resurgence or not? What about influenza? Are we gonna get a new pandemic? And the third bullet is probably the most important. What about things that we're not even thinking about? But what is for sure that no matter what, history has told us definitively that it will happen because infectious diseases, as I said eight years ago in this article with David Morins and Greg Fokers, that it is a perpetual challenge. It is not going to go away. So the thing we're extraordinarily confident about is that we are going to see this in the next few years. Thank you. So there's both, both a public messaging role as well as an infrastructure and response role. I just wondered, uh, you talked a lot about the science side, if you could uh, give us some of your thoughts on how to uh, improve that linkage in terms of response. Between the science and the security? Uh, the, the, the security and the health communities. Yeah. Well, you know, that really worked extraordinarily well, um, both with Ebola and we got even better with Zika. Because when we have our um, uh, discussions as a whole of government response, um, we did it in a way, we've really got it down well, that in the room, uh, you know, the National Security uh, Council, I mean, Lisa Monaco, when, when, we, when we really get up to a big decision, we have Lisa there, we have Amy there, we have the people from the security there, and we have all the health people there. We have the CDC, the FDA, myself, and the secretary, and it, it really works well. In fact, I was, I wouldn't say surprised, but I was gratified by seeing how when you get really smart security people who always, to their credit, 
when it comes to a scientific issue, listen to the scientist. But when it comes to the potential impact in a security way, they have an incredible amount of experience. And it's worked very well. I mean, it's been one of those things where you come out of the meeting saying, why, that was really worthwhile. I'm going to make a couple of remarks of things that I learned, some things we knew coming in, uh, but some things that I think um, are worth noting. Pandemic prevention and preparedness is going to end up being, whether the administration likes it or not, a priority, a top priority. One of the things I think we heard was um, there is only one thing we can predict with, uh, with confidence. There is going to be something unpredictable that the administration is going to have to deal with. Um, and so this is not something where, boy, maybe it'll come up, they may have to deal with it. I think you heard a, a consensus among our people with a wide range of political views that we really cannot do this without a public health emergency fund. As much as that is a political tough sell, that is something we are going to need.